This video is reviewing the bony anatomy of the elbow, wrist, and hand. Starting with the bones, we have the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. It's important to remember that when we are in anatomical position, the ulna will be on the lateral side or the thumb side, so we can make an acronym to help us remember. When we talk about the joints, we have um, right here between the radius and the ulna, we have our proximal radial ulnar joint. Between the humerus and the ulna, we have the humeral ulnar joint or the elbow joint. And then between the humerus and the radius, we have the radiohumeral joint. Beginning to look at the bony prominences, starting on the humerus, we have an epicondyle on each side. Remember, our radius is always on the lateral side. So here we have our lateral epicondyle. And then on the ulnar side, we have our medial epicondyle. Going down to the radius, we have the radial head, as well as the radial neck, the radial tuberosity is below that, and then going across to the other side, we have our ulnar tuberosity. On the front of the ulna, we have our coronoid process, or prominence. Also on the humerus, we have our radial fossa, where the head of the radius sinks in. And then on the other side, we have our coronoid fossa. Which correlates again with our coronoid prominence and the head of the radius. The articular surfaces on the humerus, um, on the radial side, we have our cap capitulum. Again, that articulates with our um, radial head. And then on the ulnar side, we have our trochlea. And that runs all the way along on the lateral aspect as well. The gap on the ulna where the radius sits called the radial groove. Allowing space for the radius to pivot against the ulna. When we look at the elbow from the posterior side, we can differentiate the radius based on the shape of the head and the squareness, and the ulna due to its olecranon process on the posterior side. So this is our olecranon process. Again, here was our radial head. The olecranon is attached to the ulna and it sits in the olecranon fossa on the posterior side of the humerus. Here again we can see our medial epicondyle. Our lateral epicondyle. We can um, kind of see the posterior side of the proximal radial ulnar joint. Again, remembering that this creates our true elbow joint, the articulation between the humerus and the ulna. Looking from the lateral side, again, we know it's lateral because we can identify the radius on the lateral side. We find the olecranon as well as the olecranon fossa through here. Here we can see the capitulum, which was that articular surface of the humerus, as well as that radial head and neck. Here we can nicely see the radial ulnar joint. 
and that radial groove that sits in the ulna. We can also, from the side, see our lateral epicondyle. And when we look from the medial side, we can see our medial epicondyle. We know that this is the medial side because of the ulna being closest to us. So here we can nicely see that olecranon fossa as well as the olecranon process. We can see that articular surface of our humerus and we call this the trochlea. And then the groove underneath that is our trochlear groove. Here we can also see our radial tuberosity. As well as our ulnar tuberosity. Moving down into the wrist and the hand, again we associate the radius with the thumb side. So we always want to locate our radius and our ulna first. The ends of the radius and the ulna, we have styloid processes. So here's our radial styloid. Then we also have a styloid process on the ulna on the opposing side. We name our phalanges or our digits from one through five, one being the thumb, and then five being our pinky finger, moving across. And we have several joints that we need to talk about here as well. The joint between our radius and our carpal bones, called our radiocarpal joint. And that's our primary joint of our wrist. We also have carpal metacarpal joints that exist between our carpal bones and our metacarpals. Here we have our metacarpal phalangeal joints. And then in the fingers, we have two interphalangeal joints. We have our proximal interphalangeal joints. And we have our distal interphalangeal joints. In the thumb, it's important to note that we only have two phalanxes. So we only have one joint, and we just call it the interphalangeal joint. Looking at the bones in the wrist of the hand, Remember, we have the acronym um, that we discussed in class, which is some lovers try positions that they can't handle. This starts from the thumb side on the proximal row and moves lateral, or medial, I'm sorry. And then it comes to the distal row and again starts thumb side in the distal row and moves medial. So we'll walk through each of those quickly. So the first thing we want to do is locate our scaphoid. So our scaphoid is our first bone closest to our thumb in our proximal row. So our scaphoid is located right here. So naming these, we have our scaphoid, our lunate, our troquetrium. So that gives us our sum lover's try. And then we have our pisiform. So we got through the whole proximal row, so now we want to move back to the thumb side to start the distal row. So we start with our T's. It's important to remember that trapezium comes before trapezoid in the alphabet, so we always label our trapezium before the trapezoid. Moving to the middle, we have our biggest carpal, and that's the capitate. And then we have our hook on the outside that is called the hamate. Looking at the bones of the fingers, again, we identified our wrist bones as carpals. 
through kind of the palm of your hand, we have our metacarpals. In the fingers, we have our proximal phalanxes, our middle phalanxes, and our distal phalanx. Remember the joints in between, we label as the metacarpal phalangeal joint, our proximal interphalangeal joint, and our distal interphalangeal joint between the carpals and the metacarpal. So here we would call it our carpometacarpal joint. In the thumb, we only have a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx with an interphalangeal joint. Looking again at the wrist only from the posterior side, again identify your radius on the thumb side and your ulna. And then remembering our acronym, so we're going to go through our carpals, okay, starting with our S in the proximal row on the thumb side. So here we have our scaphoid. In the middle we have our lunate. And then on the far side we have our triquetrium. And then you can barely see the pisiform in front of it. Then we move back to the thumb side for the distal row. Remember that we have our trapezium because it comes before tra trapezoid in the alphabet. And then we have trapezoid. We have our capitate and our hamate. Looking at the bones of the fingers, we have our metacarpals. In the thumb, we have our proximal phalanx. and our distal phalanx with an interphalangeal joint as well as a metacarpophalangeal joint and a carpometacarpal joint. We number the thumb number one, moving across the hand. In the fingers, we have three phalanxes. We still have our proximal and our distal like we saw in the thumb, and we add a middle phalanx. Here we have a distal interphalangeal joint, proximal interphalangeal joint, metacarpal phalangeal joint, and a carpal metacarpal joint. Okay, the joint between our radius and our carpals is called our radiocarpal joint.